I'm so gosh dang excited about so many things. Also, AMD copycatting off of NVIDIA and Oh man, things are really bad. And Intel did to AMD exactly what people thought would happen. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news that I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast. And today we're gonna start off talking about a feature set that I just absolutely love and I wanna see come to more motherboards, but it's gonna make the next generation of Intel CPUs that much sweeter. It's being reported that MSI's upcoming B670M motherboards will actually have a max version, which indicates that it'll support B CLK overclocking, which for those of you who are unfamiliar, means that you can take the non-K chips or the non-overclockable ones and still overclock them by overclocking their base clock, which is a different way of doing it, but you can get additional performance out of regular chips. So something like Intel's i5-13500, which we've talked about several times in hot news this week, will actually be better performers on motherboards where you can actually overclock these. So this is only gonna be coming to the max motherboards on MSI's lineup, but it does seem to indicate that it will come at a price premium of about 20, 30 bucks, but it will exist and it can support either 12th gen or 13th gen. In, In fact, fact, they have it showing off with an i5-12400, getting that up to five gigahertz, which these next gen, 13th gen chips run faster. So you might be able to get even a little bit more out of it on the 13500. 14 cores and overclockable on a $200 chip. I don't know how you swing a better value than what seems to be coming out with the Max motherboards from MSI and a 13500. I just, I'm so excited for these mid-tier chips. I cannot even describe it. Let me know if this excites you down below in the comments. Well, I get excited about today's video sponsor. My friends, today's video is sponsored by Helix Sleep. Helix Sleep is a company that's gonna deliver your next mattress straight to your door. And in fact, I've been on a Helix Sleep mattress for well over a year right now, and I love every second about it. Because Helix Sleep will provide a mattress that's personalized to your sleep needs because they have the Helix Sleep quiz, and you can take this by yourself or with a partner and find out what are your sleep preferences, whether you're a front sleeper, back sleeper, side sleeper, and what type of firmness you like on your mattress. Based on my wife and I's result, we came up with the fact that we should get the Helix Dusk Lux mattress, which is in fact what they sent me. It's a king size one. I've been sleeping on it every single night since we moved to Pennsylvania, and I can tell you that I have never once considered sending it back, which you can do if you're unsatisfied because they have a 100 night sleep trial. In case you don't love it, you can send it back to them with easy returns, but I promise you, my friends, if you get the right one matched to your sleep preferences using their sleep quiz, you're gonna absolutely love it, and they deliver it right to your door for free. Not only is it me and my wife who are sleeping on a Helix Sleep mattress, but both of my older sons are also on their own Helix Sleep mattresses, which they have been enjoying, and before that, it was my South African employees who were loving those mattresses. We've kept them for years. I've not regretted using my Helix Sleep a single day, and as somebody who prioritizes my sleep needs to make sure I'm actually actually getting a full seven to eight hours a night, making sure that my mattress is catered to my body is very important and to my sleep preferences. And I believe that you should be doing that as well, which Helix Sleep makes easy for you by again, taking that sleep quiz. You spend a third of your life sleeping. I highly believe in investing in the right setup. And I think you should too. And with Helix Sleep, they give you a 10 year warranty. You get financing options and flexible payment plans so that you have a wide variety of options to make sure that you're okay with making this next mattress purchase. I've loved my Helix Sleep mattress since the moment I got it. I cannot wait to get another night of sleep on it every single night, and I think you'll feel that way too. If you go to helixsleep.com forward slash UFD tech, you can save up to $200 off your first purchase with them. Plus, you also get two free pillows with every mattress order. But again, go to helixsleep.com forward slash UFD tech. You can save up to $200 off, get those free pillows, and start taking care of yourself and your sleep, my friends. And you know what I want to sleep in my bed with this gaming laptop because MSI is teasing their upcoming Titan GT 77, which I've had several MSI Titans along the years, but this one, oh, it has a 4K 144 Hertz mini LED laptop screen. I just, I want it so much. This is, this is crazy. Okay. 4K, 103 millisecond response time, thousand nits peak brightness. It's HDR 1000 compatible with 1008 dimming zones and 100% of the DCI-P3 color space. I'd be flummoxed to come up with a better laptop display that I could possibly want than something like that. Now, obviously MSI's Titans are very expensive. So this is going to be out of reach for most people. It's going to be out of reach for me, but 
I absolutely desperately want something like that. Man, if I could get one, I would be doing the footer rocking. And I can't tell you how ex excited China is not going to be with this latest move being announced by AMD, who's going to be following in the footsteps of NVIDIA by removing their logistics center from Hong Kong and then placing it in Taiwan in order to make it so that they're not at the whims and the fancies of the Chinese government to make sure that they're in compliance with all of the trade and regulation that goes on there and instead can ship things from Taiwan. Additionally, it turns out that costs may be going down with shipping things directly from Taiwan instead of the way AMD's been doing it, which is taking stuff they've made in Taiwan, shipping it to Hong Kong, and then distributing it from there. It might be better financially for them to do it straight from Taiwan, and then geopolitically will also potentially be a little bit better. But it does appear like there's shakes and bakes happening all across the GPU market with movements being made towards Taiwan. Intel's not even going to consider this. They do work with TFSMC, but there's stuff like ships out from Malaysia for their GPUs and a lot of other stuff they make in the US. So it's, it's really not a problem for them. And it's not a problem for me to talk about crypto stonks because that's, that's what's happening right now. Bitcoin, flat. Nothing really happening. 16,598. Ethereum, flat. 11.95. Dogecoin down. Oh boy, look at that little dip that happened right there. Oh boy, it's down 2% to be at 6.9 cents. Tesla, on the other hand, having a great day, up 7.7% to be at 121.42. This is after news came out that Elon probably actually did get margin called on his Tesla stock because the value of Tesla had fallen so low that it was no longer sufficient collateral for servicing the Twitter debt that's actually there. Tesla went so low, it's not as valuable. So you can't, you, he, ha he has to either sell it or put up more for collateral or fig figure that out. And you know who's figured stuff out this week? Reese. Okay, can we can we get a massive W in the comments? Give Reese all the love because he's been bringing you the hottest tech deals out on the internet the entire week that he's been on vacation. We've seen all of the great videos that he's shared, but I just, I want to, this is a Reese is appreciation time, okay? Post down below. I love you, buddy. Yo, welcome back to you. Good deals. You're bringing the hottest tech deals out on the internet. I've literally just got back from vacation now, like a couple of minutes ago, but I'm recording to let you guys know that yes, there are deals. Yes, you should check out UFD.deals. I haven't had time to get my normal camera set up, so another phone video will have to do for today, but don't worry, UFD deals will be back to normal next week. And with that, I'm gonna hand you off back to Brett for the rest of your hot news. Cheers and enjoy your weekend. Thanks, Reese. very cool. You know who else I love and I miss? Mr. Swizzle, K himself, Mr. Kyler. He's gonna be coming back to the office next week and I, I've just been so lonely besides Twitch chat because I've been live streaming my entire work week this entire week. I missed that little pipsqueak and I can't wait for him to come back. And I can't wait for more electric vehicle options. We got more details coming out on the Ram electric truck. Turns out that they're going to name it the Ram 1500 Rev. REV, not because you rev your engine, because it stands for Ram Revolution or Ram Electric Vehicle, however you want to slice that. Fascinating stuff. I, I'm not sure if we're going to trust Dodge slash Ram on their EV stuff until that makes sense. They do make the plug-in hybrid of the Chrysler Pacifica Wait, did, no, Chrysler's still part of it, right? It didn't get sold off. I'm not going to have this discussion right now. Speaking of not having discussions with anybody, Fitbit making a lot of weird changes going around. They're going to be switching over to a Google ID login system, but they are removing the ability for you to sign in with Google at the moment. So if you have a Fitbit, things are going to be changing. So if you've signed in via Google with Fitbit, you can't do that anymore. But sometime in 2023, they're going to switch over so that you have to sign in with your Google credentials. But the way it works now with this like continue with Google thing is gone just like they removed the Facebook one. It's getting really confusing. I'm completely flummoxed on how they're going to handle this transition, but it's it's happening. Okay. All right. The, the, the greasy wheels of how to change Fitbit to be owned by Google is happening. Also, Google Chrome making a lot of changes when it comes to how they're going to handle you downloading unprotected things. They're going to have an option for you to toggle on in case you don't want to download from HTTP websites, but instead you want that S slapped on the end, which I believe S stands for secure. Google Chrome, the entire internet have been trying to switch over to HTTPS being the default web connection setup. This is going to be the next evolution of that, making sure that you're not having horsemen of malware just jogging right on into your PC and instead making it so that you're just deliciously safe anytime you browse stuff. And if you're deliciously trying to encode video, Handbrake's got a new update for you because they are supporting AV1 transcoding for the first time, but only, only if you have Intel hardware. So it only supports Intel's QuickSync video on the Intel Arc GPUs or on the integrated GPUs on anything from Skylake onward. So AV1 encoding is supported for that, but it's not supported on AMD or NVIDIA at the moment in case you use Handbrake. You gotta buy Intel, okay? Which 
We're going to talk about that in a second. I probably should put this in a different order, but I want to buy this. I'll tell you that much. RTX 4090 with a blower cooler. That doesn't sound ridiculous to you. You're not paying attention. The RTX 4090, the 400 to 600 watt behemoth of a graphics card that cannot be cooled by quad slot things. Well, it's being sold in China with a two slot blower cooler. This is official. It's real. That thing can't keep it down. It's also expensive. They're selling it for 15,000 RMB when a cheap 4090 goes for 13,000. I don't know why I want this, but I want this. Nvidia has asked their partners to stop making blower coolers on their RTX graphics cards, or at least the gaming side of things, because they want to save the blower style coolers for data center and the like. I just, I desperately want one. I don't know why I would not do it. It would be so loud. The GPU would be so thermal throttled. There's no chance it would work well. And you know what's not working well? The graphics card market, it's dead, it's broken. It's at the lowest point in 20 years, according to John Petty Research. But there's more intriguing data than that coming out. In fact, AMD is having a terrible time. They're, they're doing awful, okay? Uh, obviously, this doesn't include all of the new graphics cards that have come out with the RX 7900s, but uh, yeah, the, the GPUs have fallen to an industry low in the last 20 years of only 6.9 million graphics cards sold in Q3 of 2022, which sounds nice, but when you take a look at the bigger chart over the last 20 years, it's bad. It has not been this bad in quite so many moons. And in fact, it turns out that this is probably the worst that it's been since the 2009 global recession that happened. But worst details coming out for AMD. Intel launched discrete graphics cards. You know that much. We just discussed that. Uh, Intel bumping up from 0% of the market all the way up to 4%, which <laughs> AMD's getting blood dry here. You can see Nvidia went up to 86% of the discrete market from 79.6, and then AMD collapsed from 20% of the discrete market to 10%. Not only are GPU sales down, probably because the prices are extreme. Uh, there's a global financial uncertainty that's happening and miners are gone. Things aren't happening. So they're not selling a whole lot. And then AMD is not only not selling volume, they are rapidly losing market share. This does not bode well for them at all. This is I was not expecting to look at a chart that showed AMD's market share getting halved. Intel took 4%, Nvidia took the rest. Y'all wanna talk about AMD and wanting to buy it. Everybody on YouTube seems to have an AMD support tilt with their comments and then an Nvidia support tilt with their wallet. And it's just a, it's a conversation that needs to be had of what, where's the, why? Why does everybody wanna mouth off on their support for AMD, but then they're not buying it. Unless, you know, the vast majority of people buying 6.9 million units of graphics cards don't watch hot news, and my sample size isn't enough to indicate the whole thing, and I also conflate people who complain on the internet with people who oppose my worldview, and maybe sometimes those people aren't the same thing. It could also be that. All right, I'm gonna... Be done with this episode of Hot News. We'll be back here on Monday with more of the hottest tech news out on the internet. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you much, so much for supporting this last two weeks of Brett being without a team. Catlin comes back on Tuesday, so Monday's episode is going to also be edited by me, but UFD is going to have a 2023. We're going to exist again. Huzzah!